I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, the youngest of four children. My parents were a part of the first migration from the South, and for them, education was really important. Given their age, um, to graduate from high school was a big deal, and both of them did. I grew up kind of working class, middle class, if you understand what I mean. And so um, I was curious about other people. So I on purpose put myself in all kinds of situations to get to know all kinds of people. So at the end of the day, I mean, being the youngest, it was really important for me to be independent. And I was a serious student. So Naperville offered me the opportunity to be far enough away from Cleveland that my parents couldn't be running back and forth. And the second opportunity was that you were close to Chicago. But the other thing is Reverend St. Angelo was involved with exposing uh, students to civil rights activity. So I went to, I think my freshman year, I went to Lake Geneva in Wisconsin and met somebody from SCLC and got connected to students in Chicago who were involved in that. And that was kind of the starting point for me. Mm -hmm. So as I got to meet people in Chicago, I started building relationships. You know, my freshman year, there were nine black students on campus and out of a thousand. So it was a very difficult place to be my roommate. The only thing we had in common that she was Baptist and I was. So I can remember when I first arrived, she was here first, she was from Wisconsin. And they said, Mina, your roommate's here. She came down the steps, saw me and screamed in my face in horror because she had, nobody told her she had a black roommate. Yeah. My father was waiting for me to graduate and my attitude was I have to figure out a way to survive here. So what I decided to do was organize. Uh, there had, the, the guys were either going to Chicago to date girls or they were dating some of the girls on campus. Um, and the one junior, she just kind of went to school. And I decided that I needed to figure out a way to make this livable for myself. Because for them, they felt that as long as they could go to Chicago or whatever, they really, nobody seemed to care about what was or wasn't going on. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've, it was a survival. I mean, my, I come from very um, conservative family. I don't come from parents who are activists. In fact, in the early 60s, when all the marching and voter registration, my parents watched it, but they had no comment. They didn't talk about what had happened and why they left the South. They just didn't deal with it. And I had gone to school in integrated situations, but what I realized is I went to school with white kids, but we went home to separate neighborhoods. So this was the first time that I had to really live in an environment that was not welcoming, I would say, the students. You know, so, that, so to me, organizing was self-preservation. Then we, uh, some of the campuses, I don't know whether we had the conference here or whether George Williams, George Williams doesn't exist anymore, but it was a college not far away. And they had, a, I don't know what the conference was called, but some conference that dealt with civil rights issues, et cetera. So when I came back fall of 67, it was probably my, one of my hardest semesters. Well, in the middle of all of this, somebody sent me a letter and asked me would I like to go to Spelman. Well, the criteria is you had to have a certain GPA, it had to be a uh, first semester junior, and white. Well, I told you there was only two or three of us around. Obviously, you can tell I'm not white, but the person that wrote the letter did not know me. So I called her, didn't you make a mistake? She said, well, uh, just apply anyway. I said, okay. And the white students who had originally applied backed out at the last minute. And I don't know whether it was because of, you know, all the riotings from the summer before. And so the way the exchange went, 
Spellman was sending someone, so they had to send somebody, and I was the someone that got sent. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to Spellman by mistake. And when I came back to North Central, the, the folks acted like I had been to Mecca, like I'd been to the Black Power Place, but really, you know, the campus in general was very conservative. It was just a small segment of us that were concerned and interested in the, in, in the issues. But I was there when King was killed. King's body laid in state on Spelman's campus at our chapel. Being at Spelman that semester and the people that I got exposure to, I was really motivated and came back. My G, I mean, my grades were good, but they were even better my senior year. One of the things, if I wanted change, I had to be educated and trained to do the change. You can't just say, I want change, and not have people in place who have the skills to make the change. And then as things escalated, um, uh, my senior year, I felt in personal danger. They were attacking black school students in the dorm. Not, not with guns or knives or anything, but they were like throwing water under their door or doing other kinds of things. So that was really very difficult to not feel safe in your dorm, that somebody was gonna do something. So I literally had to sleep with my doors locked my senior year that I lived in Raw because it didn't feel safe. The tensions had escalated so high because of what was going on in the national scene. Unfortunately, not too different than what's going on right now, but if you get the picture. So I felt very unsafe on campus. By this time, King had been assassinated, um, and we took over the administration building. And what was interesting, the president of the college was my advisor, uh, Arlo Schelling, um, and we went in to talk to him about our concerns, and then we marched towards downtown. When I look at community organizing, it's really about empowering people to make change. And part of that change is system change. So organizing is not just, I mean, if you're going to organize, you have to have some plan about what you're going to do. And often we don't ask the people who are impacted by whatever you're doing what, what their vision is and what they'd like to see. I've been very proud to say that I went to North Central because I think you folks have been on the cutting edge of some things that other colleges and universities haven't even thought of doing. But there are all kinds of stories about all kinds of people who went here and the interesting things that they're doing and have done. And I'm just really, like I said, it came, I don't know how I found North Central, but it made a difference in my life that Reverend St. Angelo was here and Schilling, because if you look at the history, the two of them together here did some extraordinary things, extraordinary. So just in the right place, the right time, and just very thankful.